What's up, everyone? Welcome to your weekly tech update, the show that explores the newest, coolest, and craziest side of tech available on the interwebs. I'm your professional geek, Ray McNeil. Coming up on the program today, it's a new year. This is our first show of the new year, and that means CES. Every year in January, the Consumer Electronics Show happens in Vegas, and this is where the tech industry showcases the newest, coolest, and craziest technology available soon to be available, and some uh, off-the-wall concepts as well. This year, we have the Uber Air Taxi. We're going to be going over AR, VR, uh, the concepts that are available, robots galore, and lots of smart tech too, as we cover CES coming up today, right here on your weekly tech update. Hi everyone. As we expected, 8K TVs were a huge topic at CES this year. Samsung already showed off its 8K QLED at IFA, but at CES, we got a glimpse at the shipping models, including a huge 98-inch Q900R. It's cool tech, but there won't be any true 8K content for a while now, at least that's what people keep telling me. Samsung's Scott Cohen explains why he thinks the company's AI upscaling could help give consumers a reason to go 8K. Additionally, the company showed off its latest micro LED sets at CES, which includes a sensible 75-inch version and an enormous 219-inch set. That's my kind of TV. As Cohen explains, that tech could give consumers more flexibility to deploy larger screens. And honestly, it seems like a lot more useful than 8K for the moment anyway. LG announced its first generation Cinebeam 4K laser projector at last year's CES. And ahead of the upcoming 2019 conference, the company is taking the wraps off of its second gen HU85L model. Check this out. The new version offers an updated design from last year's black tower shape, instead opting for a more traditional rectangular gray box that should blend a little more seamlessly into your living room. According to LG, the big new draw though with the HU85L is its ultra short throw. It uh, lets it project a 90 inch screen from just two inches away from a wall. Alternatively, users can move it a bit farther to uh, seven inches away for a bigger 120 inch image. LG hasn't yet revealed full specs just yet anyway but it is promising that the HU85L will offer up to 2,500 lumens of brightness, which is pretty good for a projector, and a 4K UHD resolution, as well as USB, Ethernet, and HDMI ports for connectivity. Additionally, like LG's other recent smart TVs, the HU85L will support the company's ThinQ AI for voice commands and smart suggestions of what to watch next. Next, along with support for a variety of built-in streaming apps. There's no word yet on price or release date for the HU85L, but uh, we're hoping it doesn't take too long to get released to the public. Backup cameras have become standard in newer cars, but drivers of older vehicles are missing out. A Seattle area startup wants to change all that and make it possible for any car to have a backup camera without the difficulty of wiring it into the vehicle. Fen Sense, a seven-person startup based in Seattle, it's in the Seattle suburb of Woodenville actually, which also has people in San Francisco, makes a smart license plate frame that connects to a smartphone app available for Android or iOS. The $149 frame acts as a parking sensor alerting users when they're close to an object. The device doesn't require any wiring of any kind, and it just screws in place just like a regular license plate frame. The app can be configured for hands-free launch as well as voice activation, minimizing the attention users need to give the app while driving. 
FinCense plans to release a pair of backup cameras as well, one for RVs and fleets in February for $199, and a solar-powered version for consumers in April for about $119 or so US. In May, FinCense will release a $70 GPS tracker with roadside assistance and recovery as well. Considering the level of spectacle you can find at CES, it's easy to forget that some companies would rather build products that help people instead of just flashy displays. Consider Neofect. It's a startup that uh, came out last year and uh, showed off their Neo Mano Glove. It's a wearable that helps people who suffer from specific kinds of paralysis regain some use of their hands. Last time we saw them, the startup had a mostly functional model, but still hadn't gotten things to the point where they could actually start producing Neo Manos for the masses. Since then, though, Neofect redesigned the glove in a few crucial ways and delivered on its promise to make the Neo Mano look a little cooler as well, and successfully ushered it through an Indiegogo campaign. More importantly though, it's mostly all wireless. Kind of like he was mostly dead, but not all the way dead. Uh, the original version requires a hardwired connection between all of the Neo Mano's components, which would have been pretty unwieldy for real world use. The current glove which we're told is basically the same as the version that will ship to backers this summer. It connects to a power and control unit that rests on the wearer's forearm. That box then connects to a remote users can wear around their neck, giving them quick access to the grip and open hand controls. Neofect expects people to be able to use the Neo Mano for about eight hours on a single charge, and as before, the wire mechanism should allow wearers to lift objects as heavy as one kilogram. That's obviously not a lot, but it might just be enough to give people who suffer from, say, ALS, multiple sclerosis, nerve damage, and more a much-needed sense of normalcy.